somehow, in the wee wee hours of Christmas morning, sparrows fart, my old dad would say, I find myself standing on my own doorstep, hand inches from the doorknob, half expecting it to be frozen solid. But the acrid taste of blackbush whiskey at the back of my mouth, and the woolly feeling of a hangover just getting started, tells me that was all just a drunken nightmare. Wasn't it? If it was, then why am I so damn tired? Dog tired, and the bones of me ache. Me body tells a tale. But what I saw, what all of us saw, what Shakespeare Bain says he did in the sky up there above the old Belvedere house, none of us will ever be the same again. Kingsport will never be the same again, neither. And I tried to picture myself sat behind the chief's desk, like I've done so many times. But I can't. I can't, knowing what creatures may lurk on the other side of any door or beyond the veil of a dream. And for a moment there, I think of turning on my heel and leaving here with only the clothes on my back, finding Lucy and hightailing it out of here, never looking back. New York, Chicago, maybe even out west. I'd wager they have a thousand uses for hard men with a kind of flexible morality. But then I catch a glimpse through the window of the tree lit up and stockings hung by the chimney with such care. All Elsa's work, of course. Elsa is a saint, a real saint. And I think of Roly waking in a few hours to rip his stocking open, Grania feeling each and every present to work out what it is, rushing outside to look for reindeer footprints in the snow on the roof. Footprints on the roof? Maybe I can sneak in without waking him. Get a couple of hours kip before the chaos of Christmas Day begins. And then some words come to me. Must be from school days. That or me old da, the poet. Words from that other Shakespeare. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. I sit awake till morning. Rowley comes down first, of course. Grania soon after. I want to tell them everything, but don't. I know I can't tell a soul. They'd think me mad. But it burns within me, over the years, a strange kind of flame that won't be blown out, no matter what forces buffet me. There must be more to know. I have to know what lies beyond. And so in between the routine police work, the stuff I could do with my eyes closed, I keep trying to catch hold of any thread that might lead me to the truth. Eisner's the same, although he just can't keep it to himself. He begins to tell anyone who listen about Itaxapiqua, her da, and the island. She'd taught him about dreams, he said. Dreams borrowed and earned. All this was just like she'd prophesied. And he talks about the ocean rising. Something coming up from the deep. A slumbering giant that started to dream once more. In your mommy's arms you're sleeping And soon dawn will come The Apocalypse Players present The Afflicted From Reckoning of the Dead By Noah Lloyd and Matt Ryan With Dominic Allen As Detective Rusty Steele Dannon McAleer As Detective John Caramel Joseph Chams As Detective Lorenzo Ferrari And Dan Wheeler as your keeper of arcane lore. 
Part 6 The Man Who Knew Too Much So the three of you meet back by the lockers. Hey, uh, I hope you guys had better luck than me. She was just a bucket of tears. Yeah, she got some nerve after I carried her kids to that place. Anyway, sounds like she was at the, uh, was it the Riled Up Club? The Riley? The Rilo? Uh, anyway. The Riles. The Riles, yeah. The Riles, that's the fucker. But I couldn't get nothing else out of her. She was acting as if she didn't remember nothing. Talked about the kids dreaming. Moran, more of your dream stuff. Oh, no, he's with the chief. I guess we'll tell him. Yeah, he's still with the chief. But, uh, yeah, you guys get anything better? Uh, well, I, I got I got a lead on the, um, the harbor side, but I'm figuring, listen, that was the Friday. That was this guy, Carter, he's, he's, he's getting all riled up, if you pardon the expression. Um, on the Friday, listening to this music, uh, that doesn't necessarily rule out your theory, Steel. Yeah. Right? What if, what if the band's there on the, then they're selling the dope or whatever it is, he takes a little bit of it. Makes him go cuckoo. Nuts job. Yeah. Well, I spoke to Price, and he uh, he told me you went to a lot of clubs, a lot of a lot of clubs, jazz, all jazz clubs. Oh, shit. I asked, I asked him if he had a particular band that he liked. He said no. He just likes new music. Hipster. And uh, I got the impression he was telling the truth. I don't think he was lying to me about that. But um, I he told me that uh, his fascination began about a week ago but when I asked him where he'd been that night he didn't want to say he said he couldn't remember but I think he was lying about that oh we got at least one club where we know the night right well that's what I got so we can check what bands were on we can check what musicians were playing that night see if it links up to any of the others maybe we should go down there and lean on the manager yeah I think that's a good idea because I never heard of no music sending people mad, but these drugs idea of yours, I can't think of nothing else. I think if we try Harborside first. Also, she said, um, and and like I totally, I totally hear you about your uh, your uh, vestry right there. That's that's her name, right? She yeah. she, she sounds like she's uh, slightly more communicative than uh, Mister Robinson. I mean, he was chance. He was he was not even on this planet anymore. You know what I'm saying? No. Look, look, I gotta level I gotta level with the two of you. Uh Bright. Yeah? Yeah. It's not like him to call in sick. Head cold. <laughs> no no way. Uh what would Benson say? Schmidt cold. Yeah. <laughs> That's classic Benson. Guy's in hospital, right? He he hasn't been able to sleep. His dreams have been sending him crazy. I thought coincidence, right? Well, yeah. Uh, and, and my eyes start moving around, and I, I'm definitely not meeting Steele's eyes, and I'm sort of focusing on Carmel slightly. But I, I say, listen, I, I, I had this, I had this crazy, crazy ass dream, crazy ass dream. Mm. Yeah, you know, I told you about uh, that girl Tina Deluca, uh, sweetheart of mine. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like, like it was just a thing, like it was just a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he says this in a way in which a man has never got over Tina Deluca. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He never liked her anyway, but yeah. So, so, so I had a, I had a dream uh, where I was chasing, I was running away from an A-bomb. I was running away from the A-bomb, and I was trying to get to, um, past the Oriental Gardens, and, uh, and I, I know this sounds, this sounds, anyway, listen, all right. Dreams are dreams. What I, what I gotta say is this, right? Uh, she's wearing this headscarf, and she turns around just at this last moment before I wake up, and she does this smile, and it's it's just too wide, you know? It's just too wide. It's like, it's just like it wasn't. Anyway, and I hand the journal over to Carmel, and I say, you go to the end of that journal. Yeah. Does, does, that, does, does that say anything in there about a, a woman getting off of a galleon wearing a headscarf? I'll, I will open it, and as I do, I, I just want to say, uh, hey, listen, uh, between us, I don't know what this is, but this Moran guy coming down for dreams... I don't know dreams, but I had one myself just the other night. You remember I told you about my uh, my Uncle Freddy, guy who got me into this whole shtick in the first place. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I could see him there, under the Hudson. Him and his concrete galoshes, you know, that's how they did him. And uh, he wasn't the only one down there. And there was pyramids down there, there was shapes down there. It's probably because I, uh, I just saw those shapes in the uh, that fucking artist's house. Anyway, I'm just saying, it's going about these dreams. We need to keep our heads. But I think we need to it's keep... Hot. It's damn hot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's damn hot. There's another explanation. I'm just thinking, I know I proposed this idea that there might be drugs runners behind the scenes at these clubs. Yeah. But I don't want us to get blindsided by by ignoring something because we're too fixated on one idea. Well, yeah. What you said about Benson just then, uh, not Benson, about... Um, Bright. Bright. There's the possibility as well that this could be a a virus or a, you know, some sickness going around. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. People get syphilis, late stages, they go mad. Right. Uh, people start hallucinating for all kinds of different disorders. So. That's, that's good, that's good police. Could be something contagious. Could be yeah. uh, not just a band, it could be someone going around poisoning stuff, poisoning fix, uh, spiking drinks. Like uh, casual workers, you know, who work different clubs, different nights. Yeah, yeah. We got to be open to all possibilities. Being kind, it could even be some pandemic spread. They might not even know they're doing it. Could just be going club to club, but either way, we need to find the source of it, yeah. My hand goes back out to the diary, I think. Oh, yeah. You still want me to look at this back page, or...? I said, no, 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 I think this is... Right, right, right. It's got to be something like that, right, still, and I'll just sl- slide it back into my pocket. We'll, uh, we'll look through it later. <laughs> and sniff and smarten my jacket up and go, we better get, uh, we better get, uh, the Emerald Isle. Yeah, good man. No, no offense, man. Huh. I can't remember my dream. It was something about... It's because you're too old. And you just bury them down inside. Yeah. They're all the same. You dreamt of a little man with an accordion. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh, yeah. Singing in a language I didn't understand. It was very David Lynch. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, yeah. So Lynch. I love it. And then you ended up chasing a child down the street because you thought it was the little man with the accordion. Oh, God, yeah. And we ended up almost beating the shit out of him. But then it was just a little kid who'd stolen a radio. Yeah. I don't know. I'm only nine. I'm just a nine-year-old. From the apartment block in which we met the artist. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun stuff. It was very, it was very, um, it was very Twin Peaks, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> could one of you give me, could one of you give me an, an idea roll? Bloody hell. I'm probably not the one, but uh, feel free. It might be me or something. I suspect that, and, unless the others are shifting that. I'm pretty intelligent. I've got 75. I, I was going to say, I think I'm too emotionally engaged with this whole sort of snaffling the diary back and feeling like I might have very nearly made a fool of myself or just avoided it, maybe. Huh. Yeah, I'm probably unable to think that, clearly. Was it one of those things you'd like us to all roll, or since it's for an idea? Uh, yeah, actually, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. May as well, I suppose. Mm. So 60 on a 50 for me. Yeah. 55 on a 45. I'm, I'm running persistently high at the moment. I did roll that 28. You did start with a bad one, so... With you in a second, there's one. Just got to swap that die out. Don't like it. Don't like it. It's moved on. I literally, I just remembered that dream as we were talking then, and I was like, oh, God, yeah. That's worth reminding me and everyone else about. Yeah, I'd completely forgotten about it. Obviously repressed it. <laughs> yeah. Damn straight. Uh, by rep- I mean, I repressed it. Dominic repressed it. Aha, there we go, right. Here we go. That's a hard success. Well played. A hard success, great. Okay, so, so, Dominic. Yeah. Um, someone in, while you were having that conversation, someone said, we've, we've got the names of some clubs and we know we've got the, the night for, for one of them. You think you might have the night for more than one of them? Which night, which night do you think you have? Which club and which night are you? Yeah, I was thinking this. Hang on, I, I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit lost now. So we know the Saturday night was. The... So maybe, so maybe this is, a, maybe this is, a, maybe this is a, a question for you in character. But your idea role, um, I think, makes you think. Okay, let's let's work out who's in what club when. Who's in what club when? Yeah. 
So, so here's what I, I mean, you'll have to fill me in with my memory because my actual memory, I didn't write all this down. So the Riles Club was um, was Mrs. Vestry. Mm. Uh, Clark Price is potentially all of them. Mm. What was it? What was Robinson and and Peter Carter? It's a good point. The uproot was so Peter Carter and. Okay, I'll tell you this much: that you think you think Ferrari has probably got the answer to your questions about Robinson and Carter because he spoke to Peggy Wheeler, and he's got the diary for Robinson. Right. Yeah, this, we've got the Tuesday twenty third. Tuesday, Tuesday the twenty third. But you've spotted it. You've spotted it. That's Robinson, right? Mm. Well, would you like to have another look at your diary entry? Hey. Wait, 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 what are you saying? What are you, what are you saying, Steele? What are you saying? Go. Well, I'll say it, yeah, I'll say it out loud. I'll say, um... Go, 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 go slow, go slow. I'm, I'm not following you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, say, I'll say it out loud. I say, um, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I know that's funny, because, you know, like, normally I'm speedy, but... Wait a minute. We can, we can tie some of these up. Yeah. We got, uh, Tuesday the 23rd, you mentioned that. I got a week ago, a week ago on, um, on Clark Price... We know Mrs. Vestry was at the Riles Club. And we know when? Saturday night, right? Saturday night. Because I lied and told her it was Sunday. And she said last night she went to a club. I think. Is that what she said? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what she said. Okay. So we can place Mrs. Vestry in the Riles Club on Saturday night. Yeah. On Tuesday, the 23rd, what was that? We got Robinson at the uh, Uproot. The Uproot, yeah. Robinson on the Tuesday. Um, Ferrari, I'd like you to push that intelligence role if you, if you can bring yourself to. What's your intelligence? Well, what I do, do you know what I was, what I was going to say was and I get the diary out and I go, yeah, 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 it's 50. Mm. Yeah, you know. I'll give you a bonus diary die if you've like actually got the diary in front of you. Yeah, I'm going to, I get the diary back out and I say, so, uh, so we, we uh, the visions of. But it is a push. Shit, shit. Okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, it's a 15. Great. Uh, but I, I, I think I push it by... Um, I've got the diary out, and I'm, I'm flicking through, but my hand just opens it on the last page as I do it, and I'm just, I'm just glancing, and I see the word Kedath again, and I, and I, sort, of, I sort of slam it back, and I think about Bright in the hospital... Except I'd never spoke to him. <clears throat> and I sort of grinned my teeth and I go, oh, fuck. oh mama mia. <laughs> uh, and then I, I just go, uh, it's Saturday night. I've been stupid, stupid. It says here the visions of Saturday night alarmed me so much. Saturday, so that was Saturday, uh, Tuesday 23rd, Monday 22nd, Sunday 21st. That was Saturday the, the 20th. Right? Right? Hey, you got a better head for maths than me. So that's, Jesus, the... That's, that's like nine days before. What day is it today? Today's Monday the 29th. Yes, yeah, Saturday the 20th. Saturday the 20th. is our, That's our first. Can anyone beat that? Can you beat that, Carmel? My, uh, my, I don't got a brain for maths, like you know. No, your Saturday is, is this Saturday, right? That's like two days ago, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, most recent. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, Vestry. The 27th. Vestry on the 27th? Yeah. We think? Vestry on the 27th of the Riles. And we've got Carter on the 20th. Uh, R- Robinson on the 20th. Sorry, sorry, Robinson. Who did you have after that, Steele? Robinson on the 23rd. That's the Tuesday, the 23rd. No, no, that's, I got that wrong. My bad. The entry is on Tuesday, and I, I show him the diary, and I say, entry, entry is Tuesday. Ah, the actual, and you see all the spelling is wrong. Saturday is spelled S A T I D A Y. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and and it says, look, it's Saturday night. He talks about it, so it's like he's recording it, remembering three days earlier. So that was the twentieth. So he starts on the twentieth, and I gotta say, I've never seen a crime scene like it, boys. So maybe it's a band, maybe this musician or band just plays Saturday night, so maybe that's just our start. But if we uh, we head to these clubs, we know. But then, but then we, I think we've got Friday with... 
So let's just run that through again. We got the Uproot, Robinson, Saturday the 20th. The Rawls Club, Mrs. Vestry, yeah. Saturday 27th. What was the other one? Um, I think it's, sorry, Peter Carter uh, on the Friday, the 26th, is that? Friday the 26th. Yes. Yeah. And we got a club for him? That's the Harborside. Harborside. That's Peter Carter. Peter Carter, Friday the uh, 20, uh 26. I'm going to tell you now for free that you've that's that's mapped. That's all right. That's all correct. You've got all those locations and all those dates are correct. You've got them. Great. All right. So Price is our mystery, our dog killer, our skin weaver. And but we know he said he said that the visions and the dreams started one week ago. I mean, he said a week, so it could be, you know. But we're looking we're looking around the 20th. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cuz it's the 29th today. What do you think's best? We we head to the most recent place and work backwards or the other way around? I mean, either way, we should learn pretty early on whether or not there's a tallying between the places. Yeah. What's I I I think most recent and and work our way back. Jog the most recent memories and then yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. So what, we go pick up uh Moran and head down Riles? All right. Staten Island it is. That's Vestry Riles. 27th that was Saturday going 27th that's that's our target yeah let's, let's, let's see what Moran thinks yeah god damn god damn son of a bitch boys uh, speak of the devil the uh, the chief has uh, set me up with a, a nice sidearm although sad to see that uh, the equipment hasn't changed much in the 20 years since I was on the force yeah so What's what's the plan? Look at mine. Mine's a bloody girl's gun. <laughs> uh, well, listen, we we got three dates, three clubs from the different people. We're figuring we uh we hit the most recent, the Riles Club down on uh, Staten Island, and uh, we see if we can find a link between who was in which nights. If the same musicians were playing, there's a link between them, definitely. That's nice. I like that. See if the same musicians are playing. I hope it's not, but. I hope it's a, a drug thing, like the chief suggested. But oh yeah, I mean the musicians would be pushing drugs. Maybe that's my our, our thinking. That was my suggestion. The fucking chief. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm not taking credit. I, hey, I ain't taking credit. So what? What do you want to do? You want to call them or head down there? No, we head down there. I think. Oh, we should head down there. Surprise them. We do what we always do. We turn up exactly. Crack a few skulls. All right. Old fashioned way. All right. Don't give them time to pack any bags. So, should we split up or all head the same place? Why don't you ride with me and we'll follow you too? Be my pleasure. Roz is, Roz is your case, technically. Grand. All right. Let's do it. See you there. Great. Pile into a couple of cars and set off. So while I'm driving over and I'm taking the bridge, I look over at Moran and I see his face and he's not said anything about it. And I see this cracked, ruined scar, this this matrix of scars along his cheek. And I think, holy shit, how did he get that? He's the kind of guy in his 60s who... Well, he must be in his mid sixties, right? That's that's what I'm getting from him. But he's he's really built. And he's carrying a little bit of weight. And a guy of his age is allowed to have done that, right? But he's built like an ox. Up top, he's still strong. You can see how strong he still is. And his hands. I know that Steel was looking at him like, yeah, yeah, you're retired now. You don't do no real work. I could tell that that's how Steel was drinking him in. But truth of it is, I think this guy's dangerous. And the way his eyes move across the city. It's like he's seeing something beyond. We drive in silence. Suits me. The last time I was here, I remember, was with Elsa and the kids. Maybe trying to give it one more chance. Or maybe just trying to get away from Kingsport. And that was just after Eisner had disappeared. But no one was surprised. People had stopped laughing at him and started avoiding him. He was seeing masked figures everywhere he turned, jumping at shadows. 
still going on about the dreamer beneath the ocean. A beneath that's lower than beneath, he said. Well, the boys at the precinct joked that he'd been taken away by the men in white coats. Sure, I half believed it myself. Even asked Gronkowski one night if he'd let me sail with him all the way up to Arkham just to see the godforsaken place where they might have put him. I keep pulling at that thread. But as I pull, it's me that's unravelling. I can't shake it. Maybe it's just this damn dream business. But these scars, they're just... It's a lot to take in. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I feel like there's a woman involved. And uh, I look at his hand, and I can't see if he's wearing a wedding ring or not. And they're big, useful hands. And I think, this guy, he's not just a dream expert, is he? <laughs> he's not just some quack. It's always about practical police for him. But I don't say anything. I wind my window down that a little bit further and I light another cigarette. I offer him one. It's wordless. And we drive on. We drive on to the edge where the sea meets the uh, city. This young lad hands me a cigarette as we drive on around the bay. Every time I gaze out over a dockyard... It takes me back to Kingsport and the last time the three of us were together. Lefty Eisner, Shakespeare Baines and myself. That was the last time either of us saw Shakespeare, of course. And I wonder, as I have so many times over the past 20 years, what those two would make of this. Either of them would be better suited to this than me. The scholar or the mystic. Not the thug with a shillelagh and a head full of regret. And I wonder again, as I have so many times, if we really can travel to another place in our sleep, and if that's where we might meet those we've lost, and if things could be different there, and whether I will ever learn the way. The sun's casting that light that it does over Manhattan, making it look like a, an island of fantasy, full of towers sparkling with an ancient light. But we're not there. We're not on the princely isle. We're out here in Queens and New Jersey and Staten Island, trying to keep a city clean, trying to do the right thing. I think about Robinson and what he did. And I think about Kedath. And I wonder why he needed to fight it so much. And I know that I shouldn't fall foul of that. Be careful what you look for, right? Isn't there a song about that? Be careful what you look for. Be careful what you find. It's about mid-afternoon, 3.30, 3, 3 4 o'clock. I think you, you probably grabbed a few more donuts when you were back at the station, uh, running on caffeine and sugar, as always. Yeah. And you head on down to the Riles Club on Staten Island. I'm assuming you can drive into clubs. In this area, you could drive <laughs> to Staten Island. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, no, that's a point. I think maybe we... Did you have to get the ferry? There's a bridge there now. Yeah, the ferry, probably. I think you have to get to the ferry. So we're at the ferry port, right? There are a couple of bridges. I wonder when they were... No, so I think... Well, there's a bridge. There was a bridge built in the 60s. Uh, was there another bridge? No, I, I, let's take the ferry. It's quicker by the ferry. Uh, I think we, we have a chat as we're leaving the precincts, and they go, don't take 24th. Don't take 24th. The tunnel will be packed. Let's take the ferry. It'll be much quicker. Yeah, yeah. And we just hear the voice of the traffic cop as we're leaving. Don't take the ferry! Not this time of year! Deep ones everywhere! (laughs) Oh, here we go. The Outer Bridge Crossing and the Girthals Bridge opened on June the 29th, 1928. Ah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Two of the the first bridges. They were the first of the four bridges. So you could get the bridge. Now, it looks like Steel might be taking the bridge after all. Let's follow Steel. 
Yeah, quick, do a Yui. <laughs> okay, so you will take the bridge. A little history lesson there for the listeners. You're, you're welcome. How did you pronounce that? Gertles? Gertles? Gatles? One of our listeners will know. So long as it's not Goebbels, I'm fine. Email in and let us know how we pronounce the... Yeah. <laughs> the, the Goebbels bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got away with it. Listen, we're 47, we've... The war's over, guys, the war's over. Gertles, apparently. One way or another, you head over the, the Gertles bridge, down through <laughs> Graniteville, Mid-Island. Uh, that Goebbels, huh? He was a piece of work. Yeah. Why'd they name the bridge after him in the end? <laughs> <laughs> you pull up outside the Riles Club. It's a big place, one of the biggest clubs in the district. Um, sort of sign ringed with electric light bulbs. They're not on yet. You know, there's a, a couple of lights on. It's clearly not showtime yet, but uh, there, are, there are people there cleaning, setting up, stocking drinks, that kind of thing. Say Moran. I guess you've seen a lot, right? I've seen quite a bit. <laughs> I I I put the uh I put the car into park and I, I see the other two as they're getting out and there's a there's a conversation between the two of them and I think uh, I miss Bright in that moment. Cause he's got such a hell of a brain on him. He'd be coming up with some cockamamie idea right now. Uh and I and I turn to Moran and I say You mentioned uh a fellow policeman you worked with had his ideas about dreams. Hmm. You ever heard of, like, people picking up dreams off each other? Hmm. No, uh, that wasn't his problem. <laughs> as far as I recall, he, uh, he used to talk about what he called lucid dreaming. He could, uh, control his dreams and do all sorts of fantastical things in them travel, make make decisions about what he did. Make ladies' clothes fall off at will. <laughs> it's, it's, it's as if he hears something in his mind. It's, his head twitches round and, says, and he says, it's almost like I can hear him now. A stiff breeze and whoosh. Petticoats. A stiff breeze and I remember him. Mm. Anyway. A four foot diameter fireball passes but nobody sees it <laughs> goes past the back of the club you can see the door is open and there's a bit of movement um people coming in and out with uh crates barrels and things restocking someone someone coming out with a mop hey you there what's that mop for freeze <laughs> <laughs> bang bang no it's not modern day police <laughs> well i'll tell you what uh Rusty, I ain't been to this place before, but uh, what do we go in? We don't want to go in too hard, right? We just want to say we're uh, looking into some stuff. You let us know who was in on Saturday. And then if they're shady at all, you know, we ask to look at the paperwork. What do you reckon? Yeah. I tell you what, <laughs> we'll do the old uh, tag team. I'll start. And if they're not helpful, you tag in. Sounds like a plan. It's never failed us before. Great. Hey, look, uh, Ferrari's over there talking to that Irishman. Uh, what does he want with his dreams? He'll be, uh, he'll be talking his ear off about those dreams. I don't get why the chief brought this guy in, I'll be honest. Like, uh, dreams are dreams. I had some weird ones. You've had some weird ones. It's hot. Everyone's having weird dreams. It doesn't make me kill children. These people are just wrong ones. I think we're focusing on the wrong thing. Anyway, hope he's a good shot anyway. If I see a little man playing an accordion, I tell you what, I'm gonna shoot him first ask questions later. Like yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Rusty, all due respect, but last time you saw a little man with an accordion, it was a little kid with a radio, so just, you know, itchy trigger finger. Let's keep that to ourselves, yeah? I think Moran and I are out of the car now, but we're still just closing up. I, I pull my, uh, my hat down, and uh, I say, so you, you two want to go in? Should we scope the place out? Well, yeah, I mean... There's no need us all walking in. That might put them on edge. That's true. What say we, uh, Moran and I, yeah. make a little circumnavigation, and uh, why don't we just walk in at the back and say nothing? Yeah, well, exactly. Sure. Why not? We'll take the air. See if any of those crates there bringing in and out have any powder leaking out of them or anything. You know what I mean? Old Steel's theory. Yeah. Right. Not good with you, Steel? 
Sounds great to me. Right. Let's do it. We'll see you in there. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. Good luck, gents. Yeah. I'll go through the front, take point. I'm right behind you. Nice. Um, so you, you walk in the front, and uh, Moran and Ferrari take a walk sort of around the back of the block, assuming there, there might be a back entrance. And the two of you who walk in the front, there's a, a kind of like a reception desk uh, that isn't manned. Yeah. And a whole load of posters on the walls and on the on the front of the desk. And then there's, there's another set of double doors that would go through into the, the club proper, basically. Any uh, any posters that look recent, as in they've been put up in like a boarding for like the latest bands, or is it all old posters? Yeah. Well, why don't you give me a why don't you give me a, a spot hidden? Yeah. Can I join in on that? Yeah. Why not? Right. As they're spotting away, it cuts across, and I say to Moran, "It's funny, isn't it? You and Steel, you can't even hide your cups, and you're retired." Hmm. <laughs> I've, I've rolled a 46 on a 40, but, like, six is quite a lot for the luck I have just to find a poster, so... Well, I failed, so... Right. Hey, it's just a bunch of old posters. We'll find that. Ah, oh, fuck. Maybe I should push it, but then if I push it, it's on 40. If you don't spend the luck, I'm going to push the roll. Well, what's your... What's your... Uh, spot hidden? 25. Fucking hell, all right, I'll spend the luck. Jesus Christ! You've twisted my arm. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Well, I'm down. Okay, well, I've still got 40. It's not the worst. You look around and say, it's just a bunch of old posters, and you see me reach for one. <laughs> just appear behind it, and then you're yeah. like, whoa, 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 wait, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> and I instantly roll my luck. <laughs> yeah, I've spent the luck. I've succeeded. The, the giant spider legs <laughs> contract back behind the poster I'm about to rip down. Yeah, so you, in succeeding on your spot hidden, you see, you know, most of the posters on the wall are all old posters. Yeah. <laughs> Freak myself out with the spider legs. But along the, like, directly behind the desk, yeah, there are, like, four, po- like, glass sort of um, glass cases. Yeah, that's kind of what I was imagining, yeah. And uh, and uh, they are, they're all, like, open and empty, as if someone has just taken the posters out. Ah. Of the glass cases. Right. A little lean over the desk, it doesn't look like they're rolled up anyway. It's someone's... They are, yeah. There's a, there's, it looks like there's the, the posters that have been taken out of the glass cases right there on the floor. Oh, great. In which case, I um, I say, uh, here, yeah, this looks like it might have uh, whoever was playing le- less. Let's have a look. <sighs> I'll roll them out. And I, I chuck him too, and I... So therefore, uh, uh, therefore... Uh, they're for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, basically. So um, Wednesday, Wednesday twenty, uh, Wednesday twenty fourth, yeah. Thursday twenty fifth, Friday twenty sixth, Saturday twenty seventh. And does it name the bands, the groups that we're playing? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great. So, are you you're looking at one particular? Well, it, it depends. Is it like a big list on each one, or is it like pretty like splashy, like not that much info? But how long would it take to look through all of them? Because obviously I'm looking at Saturday with the most intensity, but I wouldn't mind seeing if there was... There are about, there are about like, you know, um, three or four names on each poster. But if you're looking at Saturday... Yeah. I mean, if at a glance I don't see a connection between them, I'll, I'll just re-roll the other three and slip them in. They're all different. There's no repeated acts. Okay. I'm going to tuck them into my jacket anyway, because they're not using them anymore. We never know what might be handy. Saturday the 27th. Says that. Ah, hey, look at this. So uh, Saturday 27th, we got the Bay Ridge Boys, Nick Brill, the Emerald Dolls, and Alex Hound. You heard any of those? No. No, me neither. Have I? Probably not. Um, uh, Yeah, I mean, maybe some of their names are familiar to you, but uh, none of them sort of jump out. The Bay Ridge Boys, weren't they that, that small outfit on the Upper East Side? Folded a few years ago. No, that was the... The Ray Bridge Boys. Nah, something else. <laughs> the Bay Bridge Boys. Didn't they do that song, Weird Vibrations? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that was them. <laughs> I'm picking up weird vibrations. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I fold it, put it with the others, like, just fold them rather than as have them as the tubes and just stuff them into my jacket pocket and say, uh, well, should we go see what management has I'm to say? I'm making canine skin decorations. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Very good. 
Gotta got love it. Gotta love it. I think we got him. We got our guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Bay Bridge boys. Oh, man, I want to shoot something. Man, I want to shoot something. Hmm. It's not going to happen tonight. Wow. Well, never know. You can always turn the gun on yourself. <laughs> Or on uh, Eamon Moran. Oh, Eamon Moran. What a way to go, huh? Yeah. <laughs> After everything he's got through. <laughs> In cold blood, round the back of the fucking club. In fact, round the back, Moran turns to Ferrari and says, Say, I don't want to be telling you boys how to do your job, but um, how well do you know the city? Because it strikes me that the harbour side is just over the water there. Maybe... We could, we could save a bit of time and go and check it out ourselves. It's good thinking. I don't know though. They might get a little touchy that we uh, we drop them. We should check in with them first. Mm. Sure, sure. But yeah, I, I like I like the way you're moving there, Moran. Why not? Also, you know, technically, I brought that case in, so yeah, we'd we'd have jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you make of this place, huh? It all looks pretty straightforward. Hmm. Talkative type. Uh, I guess I was hoping I might find someone loading a van with a whole bunch of musical instruments, but I guess that hasn't happened. <laughs> it's very quiet round the back. No cellos leaking cocaine all over the floor. There's an entire like uh, black tie via string concerto group <laughs> with a guy in a in a carpet they're just thrown in the water <laughs> they've all got instrument cases <laughs> which we, we totally ignore that though yeah 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 that's just new york oh they've paid they've paid for us to ignore welcome it. Welcome, welcome to new york <laughs> <laughs> their eyes all have pyramid shapes painted that's them. right even i mean like moran knows that better than i do he's from boston that's it's just stand. yeah um so yeah i do anything around the back or do we just uh, no, nothing. Pa- apparently, nothing. In which case, I think we'll we'll pull in to the uh, to the front. We'll, we'll we'll just follow the others, but it'll be after a few moments. But I do glance across over to the harbour, and I think, yeah, that's 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 a good idea. Let's do that. Meanwhile, we've pushed through into the club, the main body of the club. Yeah, definitely. Rather than ring a bell or call or anything I think oh yeah no fine so you 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 go through the doors yeah and there's uh, someone behind the bar yeah filling fridges would it be filling fridges in the 40s maybe not oh an ice pot ice machines yeah maybe they're, they're certainly sort of um, checking bottles of spirits on the shelves behind them maybe they're pouring ice into buckets in and out back and forth yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but there's there's no no one around. It looks like the place has just been cleaned. It's got that smell of I bet it has chlorine or yeah, quite harsh cleaning products. But also, you know, the smell of Dettol mixed with a hint of copper. Yeah, but the smell of smoke is sort of still lingering in the air. Nice. The floor is mainly parquet flooring, but with sort of patches of carpet. Uh, and there's a there's a small stage with a semicircle of little tables and chairs around it. My, I think I, if it's the only guy I can see, I wander straight up to the bar. I say, uh, hey friend. Oh. You the manager here? Oh no. No, I'm just a barman here. Right. Where can we, uh, where can we find the guy in charge? Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I, I don't think he'll be in. Uh, don't think he'll be in yet. You know, I I got the keys. I open up, let the cleaners in, and right, right, right. Big cleaning job. Was it a heavy night? Huh? We're a musical group. <laughs> Say again. We're a, we're a musical duo. He said. We're a musical duo, and we're trying to get booked. Who do we talk to about that? Oh right. Uh, you sure? <laughs> you look like cops. <laughs> Why do you think we look like cops? Well, I guess that's just the way you know. I. I've met a few cops in my time. You look like cops, the way you dress. Well, that's why we call ourselves the police. (laughs) That's a good name for a group. Yeah, we know. Hey, Rusty, (laughs) Rusty, when I said you take over if it's going badly, I didn't mean... (laughs) Hey, don't stand so close to me, Jesus. (laughs) Every step you take, you're there. (laughs) 
Amazing. Right. Well, that's the theme for the next. <laughs> Listen, uh, well, big clean. You have a heavy one last night? No. Um, or do you always scrub it, scrub it to within an inch of its life? No, we're closed. We're closed on Sundays. Right, right, right. But, but the cleaners don't come in till this morning, so they just leave it on a Sunday. Ah, uh, so this is Saturday night's mess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just the usual. Yeah. Any fights, anything like that? Uh, no. No? No. Who'd you have on out of interest? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of my jazz. That's the only reason I ask. Always looking for a new place to frequent. Yeah, I don't really pay much attention. Um, no? You heard uh, the Impossible Fossils? <laughs> no. The Little People? Mm, no. No. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't have heard of them. They're not big yet. Right. So, sorry, who did you say you had on? I uh, can't remember. Maybe it was, uh, let me think. Stinking Gin. Uh, um, Bay Ridge Boys. Uh, oh, yeah, the uh, the Emerald Dolls. They're real swell. Oh, yeah, they good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're that, that, swell. Um, let me think. There should be a... There should be a... Alternating current, direct current? There should be a postal line around somewhere or a, like a... You ever heard of Nick Brittle? Nick Brittle's about a lot. Was he here Saturday? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he was. Nick Brill. Is he a regular? Uh, no, he he, no. he ain't played here before, no. Uh, and uh, my good friend, my good friend, this is why Alex, Alex, uh, Alex Hound, you, uh, that's his stage name, obviously. Oh, yeah, yeah, he... You know the fella. Sure, yeah. Yeah. He played, uh, he, he ain't played here before either. Ah, uh, well, he said it was a nice joint. The only, the only, uh, I, I, I know the dolls, but the others, I... Yeah, the dolls, they play a lot around here, different clubs. They play the harbour side sometime, or... I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, what's your boss's name? O'Brien. O'Brien? Huh, okay. No, Brian. O'Brien. Mm. Brian O'Brien. No, not O'Brien. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Right, Okay. Brian. Ah, ah, ah. I just, I write Brian O'Brien 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 over and over in my, <laughs> my notebook. Right, okay. I think, I think we come in at the back. Thank God. I lean over your shoulder and see your notebook go, oh! <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Brian, no. Oh, Brian. No, no, no. Moran and I come in at the back like two cops. Like two cops. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I might not have looked like a cop, but Moran looks a thousand percent like a cop. <laughs> the guy behind the bar says, Oh, is this the rest of your group? This is the rest of the uh, the police? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, this is uh, Renzo on, uh, he's on the double bass. And, uh, well, I bet you can guess about uh, Moran here. Of course, it's the fiddle. It's just sort of a folk fusion. <laughs> You ought to hear him. But John here, when he sings, he does this kind of like Jamaican accent for some reason. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. I, sh I probably shouldn't do that. But I do. I can't help myself. <laughs> and he sings real high pitched. <laughs> sounds sounds great. Yeah. You got a card you could leave or maybe. Yeah. Just give him my police card. My detective card. Got a MySpace page. <laughs> MySpace. MySpace page. <laughs> Stick a message in a bottle. It'll get to us. Yeah. It'll get to us. Yeah, yeah. Th these were our comrades. Hey, we were just asking about the place. We know who was in on the uh, Saturday, but uh, apparently the manager's not here till later, so maybe we was a wasted visit. Yeah, it makes sense. We figure the harbour side's real close. Maybe we'll go and check out, see if these... Uh... Yeah, maybe we'll go there. Who have you got playing? Who might have been there? Well, we got the Bay Ridge Boys, Nick Brittle, the Emerald Dolls, Alex Hound. I make a note in my notepad. Yeah. Yeah, it's a swell place, the harbour side. It's just across the bay. You, you might catch them out. You, you want to see if you can get a get a slot there? And he's looking at you like he knows he knows your cops. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm look. Yeah. <laughs> well, unless one of you want to do a roll back. I think I'm looking back at him like I know he knows we're cops, but I'm not yeah. feeling the need to break that. <laughs> and he says, say, listen, if you, if, you really, if you really are a group and you want to get booked then maybe you could um you got a got a record you could send or we we do uh monthly auditions oh yeah i'll, I'll have a word with the manager 
Great. You got a you got a card you can leave and maybe get in touch. No. No. Because you're cops, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I was gonna say I say yes and I just give him my detective's card. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show him your badge. I'm just looking him straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You let us know. Tell O'Brien we'll be calling back in. Hey, kid. I got a question for you. Yeah? Go on. Anything really fucking weird ever happened on one of these nights? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking really weird. Like, so weird that you try not to think about it and no one talks about it no more. I'm talking recent, like in the last two weeks. Ah, uh, no, no. Uh, Anyone gone off sick? Not able to sleep? Uh, Having weird dreams? Well, I, I, I was expecting... I was expecting uh, my colleague in today. He ha- hasn't shown up yet. Um, he was in on Saturday night, but... What's his name? Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. Fucking hell, so many names in this. Stevenson? Stephen Stevenson? Is that what you're saying? You're sticking with that? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Simon Stevens or Stephen Simons? So we got Brian O'Brien and Stephen Stevenson. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've reached the end of the A4 page that was this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The manager is Brian O'Brien. Uh, <laughs> and, and my colleague is Stephen Stevens. <laughs> Stephen Stevens. <laughs> no, l- listen, in all seriousness, you ain't in no trouble. But uh, listen. I know. Oh, you know. Oh, you know, do you? Why would I be in any trouble? Listen, I'm the cop. I tell you if you're in trouble or not. I'm telling you, you're not yet. As long as you cooperate. We can make trouble. I take a step back. Cocky bastard. Listen, you was in Saturday night. I don't understand what's going on here. Yeah, clearly you don't. You don't understand how serious this is. You want to get implicated in murder? You want to get implicated in anything that serious? Infanticide? Yeah, that sound up your street? Pervert? Creep? Deviant? Listen, I... Do you want you want a drink or? Yeah, pour me a triple. And while you're at it, tell me if there are any kids in here on Saturday night. Kids? No, of course we don't let kids in. That usual? You allow kids in here? No, no, no way. Mm, right. Well, that's not what I've heard. So uh, you best get thinking while you pour that drink. <laughs> anything else? Anything else tickle the back of your mind Saturday night? Nothing weird. No kids in here. No. Uh, Strange outings, no music, no fights, nothing. It was just a normal night. Well, there was music, yeah. There was, you know. Yeah, I know there was fucking music. Of course, there was music, but no, no, no kids, no <laughs> fights. There was um, so hostile. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, the, uh, the 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 dolls, the Emerald Dolls, they're always good. Um, the other bands, uh, you know, I I ain't heard them before, not so much. Not sure we're gonna get them back. Right. Why? I don't know what else to say. Weird jazz, was it? Yeah, some of it. Pretty weird. Right. Stuff you'd not heard before? It's not my kind of thing, you know? I just work here. Oh, you're not into jazz, no? (laughs) Answer the questions! Answer the questions! (laughs) (laughs) Give me that fucking drink. Anyone else got any questions for this punk? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I got a question. Uh, Which was the weirdest? Oh. Now you're asking. I guess... Alex Hound and Nick Brittle were... Alex Hound was weird. Nick Brittle was... I say it was just bad. And the Bay Ridge boys were so-so. But the crowd here, they didn't seem to mind. You know, they know we, we got some experimental stuff. That's why they come. Hound was weird. Brittle was bad. To your ear. And Bay Ridge was okay. Bay Ridge was okay. And the Emerald Dolls are irregular. They're good. Right. Yeah. Case closed. <laughs> You've exhausted my knowledge. <laughs> I think we exhausted your knowledge when we asked you who the manager was. <laughs> you mind if we, uh, you mind if you mind if we look at the uh, dressing room? Uh, sure. Be my guest. Good. Um, and I, I gesture to Moran. This way, uh, I say, sort of pointing through the back of the bar. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, it's just, just down there. Past the uh, bathroom on uh, on the left. Uh, I I I left it unlocked after uh, 
the cleaner's been in there, so. I just want to. I just want to do a little. You know, yeah, yeah. Eyes on. When in Rome, may as well scour the place. It's it's uh, it's clean, um, tidy. Nothing. It looks like it, it looks like it's just been cleaned. Like a fucking murder scene. One of those small back rooms where people prepare to perform, filled with desperate sweat and the hope of a decent paycheck. What a life. Who'd ever do that? I turn to Moran and I say, Bright would do some crazy thing where he'd start trying to get into the mindset of these people right now. He'd try, he'd try and imagine what it would be like to play this gig. That's so. Poor, poor guy can't even probably think straight right now. Well, when, uh, when I was on the force, wouldn't spend too much time trying to get into people's minds, but just make sure we'd followed up every lead. Let's head to that harborside, huh? That's what I'm saying. I I head out to Steel and I say, I, I think I go straight up to you, Steel, and I and I and I just whisper into your ear and I say, do you mind if we uh, head over to Harborside, me and Moran? You can join us there if you like. I think we got everything we're gonna get out of this place. We can always come back. And I uh, I t- I tip the fedora, but I I don't say anything else and I just leave. So are you, are you all heading to the Harborside? Yeah, yeah. Even with Moran's earlier suggestion that we split up, I feel like I'm still in favour of sticking together for the time being. Fine. But first, I knock Caramel's drink over the bar and then get my Zippo out and set fire to the fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what? No, I don't. What are you playing? What are you, <laughs> what are you playing at? <laughs> Christ! I, I heard. I heard I you cops were arsonists, but I, I didn't believe it. <laughs> I did. I don't do that. So, you get in your cars and you drive. It's a short drive. Um, the the Harborside Club is uh, just the other side of the, um, the of the river from Staten Island, because why not? Yeah, in New Jersey. Jersey boys, burgers for the boys. And the Harborside is a it's a kind of grimy little place uh, at the end of like a a row of kind of dive bars, and it's. And it's open. Looks like it's the sort of place that maybe opens early and, you know, operates a, a bar. You see the, the doors open and the lights are on. How do you want to do this, Renzo? Yeah, let's, let's do it the old-fashioned way. I say we just show the badge and go on in. All right. Unless you're thinking they got something to hide. Everyone's got something to hide. Uh, I mean, it's the kind of dive bar that no, I think it's it's fine. We'll maybe not share the badge, but I think we'll just head on in. Moran and I'll go in. You hang at the back. Sure. Yeah, why don't, why don't we take the lead this time? Good idea. And I, when we do go in, I, I well, I can wait and see what happens. But I'm expecting you sort of, rather than doing like any circumnavigating, I'm thinking, like, let's just come on in. Like, we'll go in first, but like... A second. Yeah, so it doesn't look like the sort of place you can go around the back of it. Mm. You know, the front of a row. Um, but you but you could certainly hang outside. I'll go I'll go in behind them. Fine. Yeah, me too. After you, Ferrari. Thanks. And uh and you walk in, there's no there's no like reception in this place. It's um it's just a bar with a with a t- tiny little sort of stage area. You can imagine, well, you can imagine where the stage would be but at this time of day there's a couple of tables and chairs up there really it's really smoky dingy low ceiling sort of smoky lamps hanging from the hanging from the ceiling uh, one of my favourite artists smoky lamps hello is there anyone in here yeah there's I mean there's a few there's a few customers sat around having a drink and there's this, uh, there's an old guy behind the bar oh sorry I, 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 I thought it was like a band Anyone there? <laughs> it's that Smokey. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, Smokey Lamps played here. She's great. So, so, so much for the stealth approach. Sorry, gents. <laughs> <laughs> the customers. When you say there's anyone here, the customers all sort of look round and <laughs> like you crazy. Turn back to their drinks. That's such a mad tactic. I love it. <laughs> I, I readjust my hair and walk exceptionally fast to the bar. So I leave. I leave the other three in the dust. Once, once they're in, I, I'm going to sort of go around the edge of the bar and I'm going to just sort of like have a look around in that kind of way that you know it's like there's like velociraptors you know 
sleazy old New York dudes do. Yeah. And I might even, if there's someone sat drinking alone, I might ask if I can join them so I can pick the brains of the... Yeah. So you do see... um, A small child. And... uh, With a glass of squash. A man in his 40s, fairly sort of like unshaven, having nursing, sort of nursing a a whiskey, sort of just like taking tiny, tiny little sips of it, sort of staring into the middle distance. I'll just head over and go, mind if I join you, friend? Be my guest. Well, drink here often? Uh, yeah, I guess. It's cheap in the day. I'll leave before the music starts. It's Charles Bukowski. <laughs> You're not a big fan of the jazz, huh? No. No, it's, it's a racket. It's, you know, cacophony. Horrible noise. All sounds the same. You ever just stayed out of curiosity? Nah. Well, you have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Up at the bar, uh, Ferrari, have you gone up to the bar? Mm, yeah. Uh, what can I get you? <laughs> I, I think I do, having judged the, the, the general lie of the land, I, I take the badge and I just show the badge, but I don't say anything. Hey, listen, we, we, don't, we, don't, want, we don't want any trouble. Hey, no, 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 I just, I just got a few questions. Yeah, uh, go on. Listen, I, uh, I had a, I had a woman, there was a woman in here, uh, last, um, last Friday. I don't know nothing about any woman. Okay, okay, she, she's real pretty. She was here with her boyfriend. Her name's Peggy Wheeler. You know, you know any Peggy's? She probably, she probably drinks, uh, I don't know, like, uh... Apple teenies. Vodka lemonade or something, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, you're talking daytime or night? I think it's the evening. They come for the, they come for the jazz. Yeah, I don't work nights. I don't work nights. They play, uh, they play any Alex Hound, any Nick, any Nick, uh, Brittle here? Oh. Yeah, what, you want to know who was playing Friday night? Sure. All right, hang on. And he, um, goes under the desk and, um, pulls out a, like a, a book, puts it on the desk and, Starts turning pages. Oh, oh. Let me have a look. Um, uh, Friday, Friday, right? Uh, so we had uh, Friday. Here it is. Here it is. Friday night we had Lightning Malloy, Jazzy Jim, <laughs> and Nick Brittle. So crazy, he kind of sounds bad. I don't know. I wasn't here Friday night. Anyone? Anyone was? I don't know. You can ask around. Sure. Uh, anything uh, slip your mind? And I slip uh, credit rating 40, boys. Hey, hello. I slip a, I slip a $5 bill onto the uh, bar. Anything, uh, anything I need to refresh your mind about? Uh, Brittle. Anything my friend Benjamin here should know about? Yeah, Mr. Franklin's real keen to know. <laughs> I'm trusting you on that one. I have no clue which president... Is on which? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what the five dollar note is. <laughs> That's probably a gross mistake by us, but <laughs> yeah, like it's a fifty. Brittle, well, there's Nick Brittle. You want to know about? Is it? Sure. Tell me. Tell me something about him. Yeah. Uh, he takes. He takes your 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 five dollar note or whatever it is. Five dollar note seems rather a lot. I don't know. Maybe not in the nineteen forties. It's forty seven. Things have changed. Yeah. True. But maybe he, t- he takes it and he slips it into his pocket and he says, Nick Brittle. All right, let's have a look. And he flips the book to the back and he slides his fingers down. He goes, All right. He's, uh, he's with a, a booking agent. Uh, name of... Uh, oh, Joseph and Don both leant forward simultaneously then. <laughs> <laughs> To write down this hastily made up name. Yeah. <laughs> well, a booking agent, name of um name of Dominic Allen. <laughs> <laughs> That's not gonna get confusing later on. <laughs> no. What, what kind of a cockamamy bullshit name is that? <laughs> oh, I know them. Yeah, my uh my brother in law, he was in uh, light entertainment for a bit. He uh he he uh, he was approached by headhunted by them. A- Alan and Chance, I believe they're called. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. But if you want to get in touch? I got I got a number for him as well here. Yeah, great. 
Thanks. I don't think we should ever call him. <laughs> he um he he gets a scrap of paper and writes out the number to you, and says so. Here you go. Anything else? Anything fucking weird ever happen in here? Why do people keep asking me? Oh no, that was the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, people ask that a lot, do they? Yeah, interesting, interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, it, sh- shit. A load of weird shit happens here. A load of weird, a load of weird shit happens here. Take a look around. Yeah, did something really weird happen on Friday the twenty sixth? How many times do I have to say I don't work nights? <laughs> I was over there talking to that guy. Didn't hear that bit. Do you know who was working? You heard any stories, fights breaking out, or any troublemaking? I'm all out of clues. Mm. Right. <laughs> Could my friend Thomas Payne help with that? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the $96 bill. Oh, all the dialogue options are grayed out. We've used them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What time is it, Dan? Can you remind me what time it is in the game? I think it's probably about 6 p.m. So it's 6. Right. So the evening is on. The evening's settling in. August 29th, still still, still, 90 minutes of sunlight left. And we might be able to find where this fella's gig is tonight still. Jazz clubs open till the early hours, right? Even in the 40s, especially in the 40s. I've got an instinct we can track this guy down. Have you... Uh, have you is it fair to say that you've decided that Nick Brittle is your best lead? I feel like it's the name that's come up twice. I'd like to know more about him. I'd like to know more about him. Keeps coming up. Three's the charm, right? So if we go to the uproot and they mention him as well, yeah, then we know we got our guy. True. I like the sound of it. Hey, Steele, one more thing. I uh, I should have mentioned back at the station. Peggy Wheeler said to me that the uh, the music was so weird it was kind of bad. So I'm just going to put that in. And Nick Brittle was bad, right? Right. That's what our friend back at uh, back at the the, um, the Royals Club said. Yeah, but he also said Alex Hound was Hound was weird. If we go to the next place and Hound's on that bill, maybe they're a double act. Maybe they're running it together. We can't cross anyone off yet. Sure, accomplices. The brittle Hound. Yeah. Okay. Well, we know where our next stop is. This whole thing stinks. The high heaven. <laughs> hey, three beers, Moran. You want one? Uh i take a beer as well. We'll take a four. And then uh, to the uproot. We'll uproot the uproot. Yeah, yeah. Let's get down there. We'll uproot the uproot. Let's enjoy these beers first, though, boys. Yeah. Well. Part of the good, honest police work. Cheers. Cheers. To the old country. And to dreams. Huh? Whatever the fuck they mean. Moran takes his beer and he just... Downs it in one. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, I forgot you had that skill setting. <laughs> <laughs> the old fucking steel liver of yours. Yeah. The old racist skill check. Yeah. And session two will start with Moran drunkenly beating someone up outside the club. <laughs> <laughs> I think I walk over with the number to, um, I go over to Steel. Mm. And I say, hey, Steel. Yeah. I got a number here for Brittle's agent. Uh, some uh, some guy called Alan. Well, that's that's not his first name. That's his surname. He's one of those guys with two two first names for a name. You know, probably a limey. That's an uh, that's an Innsmouth name. Sure is. That's what I figured too. Well, we don't want to we don't want to bust all the way up to Innsmouth. So what about we? Um, I just want I just wanted your thoughts on this, huh? Because I know you've seen a lot, and I feel like this thing's sprawling now. Uh, we could call this uh, fella Alan. We could we could poke around here. What do you think? My instinct is to call, but also maybe send 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 out to the next club simultaneously. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I feel like we should rule out all of the. We should start with all the leads we got, and then all the leads we got from those leads, we then follow after we followed the first leads. If that makes sense. Otherwise, we're gonna get ourselves in a whole heap of tangles. Sure, sure. I'm gonna finish my beer, and I and I drain the beer. Fast, and I put it on the bar. Carmel, what you think? Well, the way I figure it, what we got one more club to uh, to check. This definitely on the list. That's right. So we hit there, and then you know, if this uh, whether or not Brittle's been there, we we've, we've already got a link. So uh, then we call the agent. I'm not calling him. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. We we phone his agent and act as an interested uh, 
big venue who's looking to book him and we ask him if he's playing anywhere tonight I mean this guy seems prolific he'll be playing one of those uh, 110 clubs that were mentioned earlier <laughs> New York sure is a swinging city there's a great place in Harlem I got told by this broad I was seeing uh, the Juju House I think they call it but uh it's uh, been run down for a while, but I think they hold little uh, illicit sort of jazz gatherings there. You, you, you're, you're slumming it, Carmel. Yeah, well, you know, it's you're twenty, you're twenty years out of date. Listen, I go where the girls want to go. You get shot down there. Yeah, well, at least, at least you don't look so much like a cop. Yeah, true. No offense meant. Ah, uh, none taken. Uh, I guess we should get Moran's thoughts on this. Yeah, he looks kind of like he's in a reverie over there. <laughs> Hey, Moran. Oh, I was just enjoying my second drink. <laughs> I, I do a double take. So, wh- what is it? The, uh, the uproot in Williamsburg. Yeah, looks like that. Let's do it. Let's go to the uproot to see what we can find. Sounds good to me. Is this how I talk? Yeah, something like that. So That's how you talk, Steel. Great. That's how you talk last time I heard you. It's consistent that you ask. Is this how how I talk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it that's how you talk. <laughs> that's a shame. <laughs> Great. So you do you hop back into your two two squad cars and head on up to the uproot. Yeah. Let's let's ride. Well, you you pull up outside another club. Mm. It's about six o'clock. Uh, so, you know, punters are kind of just starting to turn up for the evening. You can see a few people wandering in. It's in a a slightly edgy, but still quite, but sort of an area of town that's still quite trendy with um, people who are into this kind of music. It's a kind of shabby door, the, the sign, the Uproot Club, sort of printed on the brickwork over the top of it. The doors open, and there's sort of a flight of stairs that lead all, almost immediately down as you as you come in the door. Ah, uh, yeah, those are the jazz clubs I know. Proper. Well, what do we say? We go in, we ask a few questions, same same routine as before. Anyone want to take point? Sounds good to me. Uh, I'll do the talking. Should think, Steve. Sounds good to me. I think they might talk my language in here. Someone's gotta. Your kind of people, right? Say Moran. What you saying, Ferrari? The uh, the face. Where'd you get that? Mind if I ask? The face. You in the, you in the war? In the wars, maybe, but not the war. Oh, I see. I nod uh, in an Italian manner. Police work. The old hurling injury. Tipperary v Mayo in thirty one. Less said the better. He changes it every time. Perfect that he's tight lipped about it. But it's it's a respectful nod that. Um, Ferrari gives. Maybe there's a slight glint of awe in his eyes. You served. Is that right, Ferrari? <laughs> I jumped out of a plane into a tree and I uh, punctured my lung. But I was ready to serve. Well, sounds like you did your bit. He's being modest. He probably hit a crowd or two on the way down, you know? I did discharge my weapon. <laughs> yeah, that's all that counts. <laughs> Bet you did, you son of a gun. <laughs> I, I raise an eyebrow and I... Uh, and I, I dip my hat at, at the men, and I realize how brittle and, and false it all sounds, but I feel nervous. Hey, you say brittle? Brittle, did you say? Uh, did I say that out loud? I did. I feel brittle. <laughs> Strange. Well, should we make our way in? Yeah. I finished my cigarette, and I'm about to toss it into the dry grass. And then I stop, and I manage to put it down and, and stub it out. And I enjoy the 40s by lighting one as we enter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, smoking like a true smoker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you remember those? Do you remember those days, though? Do you remember those days? I see you all file in and uh, sort of down down the stairs, and uh, kind of smoke stained wallpaper on the stairs, posters of um, artists who've, who've played over the previous years, um, some of them signed. And you sort of head down the stairs and then round a corner and down another flight of stairs and into uh, into the club. It's kind of one level flat floor with tables around and a little bar at one end. And there's a few people up at the bar, a few people sat on the tables and a couple of guys just setting up like a sort of rudimentary PA system on the, on the little stage at the other end. Mm. Sort of 
kind of beginning to be a bit of an evening buzz about the place. Is there anyone either behind the bar or during the setup who seems automatically to be in charge? Like who's got the air of a manager, or or is it just a free for all? Uh, yeah, no one, no one gives the impression of a manager. Uh, I'm going to go up to the bar, slap my hand on the on the bar, and make eye contact with the whoever's behind it. Mm. It falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud of dust and spores. <laughs> Get your drink? Uh, yeah, three, four, uh, four, um, <laughs> four Mickey Quicks. <laughs> Mickey Quicks? Never heard of that one. And they're all the kids are drinking now. All right, um, four, uh, they're on dirty Sprite these days, boss. <laughs> four Jaeger bombs. Make them quick. <laughs> Listen, fella. I, I serve hard liquor to hard men. <laughs> you can call it what you want. <laughs> well, I didn't know it was one of those kind of bars. <laughs> We're actual real policemen. We're not strippers. You want a whiskey or a beer? Uh, four whiskeys. No junk in it. Four whiskeys. The size of beers. He lines up the glasses and um, pours them all out. Yes, what I asked for. Mickey Quicks. <laughs> four pints of whiskey. <laughs> <Are> you stupid? <laughs> I say, uh, yeah, you the you the manager. Well, yeah, I guess uh, I guess I I pass for the manager on on a on a Monday night. So you're not the manager. No, <laughs> I'm not the owner, but I'm the, you know. <laughs> there's no one uh, there's no one else in charge. I see. All right. Now, uh, who you got playing tonight? Tonight, let me have a look. Uh, we got. Uh, Lucy, Lucy Oak and Lucy Oaken is starting up, right. uh, and then we've got the uh, uh, Samuels family, and that uh, mm, well, looks like that's it. Quiet night. You stay, you staying for the show, or you do open spots after, or do open spots as well? Seems like a short night. Uh, no, no, no. Just what's on the bill is what's on the bill. That's right. Well, there you go. All right. And uh, do you uh, manage the bookings? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I have a hand in that. You ever heard of a guy called Nick? Where were you on the night of the 20th? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you ever heard of a guy called Nick Brittle? Oh, God, yeah, that noise. Yeah, I wouldn't forget that in a hurry. Yeah, he played uh, about um, a week back. Uh-huh. How did that go down? Well, it, it was... Um, <laughs> It yeah, divided people, you know. I thought it was a god awful sound, but um, some folks seem to like it. I don't think we'll be getting him back in a hurry, though. When you say seem to like it, you mean they were dancing, or? Yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't the kind of music you want to dance to. How did you know they were liking it? Well, they were. I mean, place like this, got to be honest. People let you know if they don't like it. Uh huh. You know, I get up, walk out. Sometimes throw shit at the stage if it's that bad but no a few people they were they were really focused you know I, I guess like jazz nuts they like that kind of thing right yeah uh huh <laughs> how how uh how was he to talk to I mean he uh affable type or is he one of them artists that's a bit uh full of themselves you know he's uh he's a funny character as far as I recall he's um a bit jumpy yeah in what way what 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 do you mean jumpy? He's a uh, what nervous type, anxiety. Yeah, you know, like uh, it, hey, if I didn't know better, I'd say he had um, that uh, shell shock or whatever you call it. You know. Ah uh, yeah yeah. See on some of the guys come back. Yeah, seen a lot of that. He had that look about him. You know, he was. Um, <clears throat> hmm. I move forward with a slightly awkward start, as if as if I'm prepping for running, and then I like this guy. He made points, and then I, and then I stop. Like your friend there, he's you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But 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 bigger, like he's just he's sort of. He didn't look like a, a muso, you know. We get a lot of cats in here. I, I don't. They'll be using that expression in ten years, twenty years from now. But sure, they will. <laughs> take my word for it. Yeah. But he, he he didn't have a a musician's look about him. Gotcha. What did he look like? If you had to give him a description, I I say he looks like he looked um. Yeah, jumpy, but um, stocky, quite stocky. Tall? 
Uh, yeah, average, maybe a bit above average. Mm-hmm. Five, five, nine, five, ten. Uh huh. All right. Any uh, distinctive features, tattoos, anything like that? No, no, he was unremarkable. Unremarkable, except for the fact that the music was so. Well, I thought it was awful. I got to be honest. We we, we ain't going to be getting him back here. Listen, is there anything else? Because I need to get to the other customers, if you don't mind, officers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the other customers ain't the cops, so. (laughs) Sure, sure. I understand. Uh, So uh, we just got a couple more questions. All right. So this guy, he played on the 20th, right? Uh, Well, if that's what you say. No, I'm asking. I don't know. I, it was some. It might have been the twentieth. It was sometime last week. I could check the book. Why don't you check the book? We got time. We got these pints of whiskey to drink. Yeah, and I lean over to the other people on on the bar waiting, and I say, "You're not in the rush, are you?" <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. We all take our guns out, put them on the <laughs> on the bar. <laughs> so he goes he goes into the back room and he gets a book. And he pulls it out and he says, uh, yeah, just like you said, Saturday 20th, we had um, Holly Stokes, Nick Brittle, and the Long Island Sound. Yeah. I'd say more people would have left if it wasn't for the fact they stick around for the Long Island Sound. They're popular, yeah? Oh, sure, they're real popular. You ever heard them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. I just, uh, I don't know what's in vogue these days, you know? Is that the term? No, we were lucky to get them down here. Normally, they play much bigger places. Yeah. Say, I think I think they might be playing tonight. Yeah. Where whereabouts are they? Oh, um, is it the Apollo? Might be the Apollo. Right, the Apollo. That would make sense. That seems like their sort of their sort of joint. And did they 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 cross over? Did Nick Brittle run over his set or anything? Was there any interaction between the two of them? Or uh... not as far as I know. Sure. Hey, what goes down in the green room stays in the green room, I suppose. Mm. Speaking of that, um, if you can cast your mind back to that night, mm. anything that, did you notice anything either during the night or after that was out of the ordinary? Even a small thing could be important. Uh, let me think. Anyone behaving weird or... Well something strange happening or a fight breaking out or anything like that? No, nothing out of the ordinary, but, um... No one skinning a dog in the back alleyway? Or... Skinning a dog? For example. <laughs> <laughs> so turn a phrase. No, I, I, I mean, as I say, there was, uh, there was a lot of focus during Brittle's set. People either seemed to love it or hate it, and, um, the ones who hated it, well, they, you know, I got up and left. It was a pretty awful sound, and the ones who were into into it, um, they uh, they seemed pretty intense. Uh, yeah, but I can't remember an, anything much. No, it was fairly ordinary night. What instrument does he play? Saxophone. Ah, oh, I see. All right. Well, you've been very helpful. Hmm. Yeah. You're welcome. I'll fill out this uh, feedback card. <laughs> Very kind. And I net my whiskey and I just say, uh, how have your dreams been recently, all right? Any weird dreams? I only ask because, uh, well, uh, I know a lot of people ain't been sleeping that well. My sister's a psychologist. She's into all this stuff. I, I told her I'd ask about in the different districts. He, he shifts on his feet and sort of looks down the bar at the other customers and then comes forward and says slightly more quietly, yeah, I, I ain't been sleeping too well, but I, I figure it's the heat. Yeah. Why'd you ask? Hey, it's just uh, just a little theory I'm working up. Isn't that right, Moran? Sure. Just a little theory. All right, well, uh, don't get doing anything weird. I wasn't planning on doing anything weird, but thanks for the advice. <laughs> well, next time you're thinking about it, don't. <laughs> uh, understood. Just say no. (laughs) This whole city's gone weird, I tell you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been weird for a long, old time, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Let's get the hell out of here. Hey, yeah. And he he just sort of um, nods towards Ferrari and says, "Thanks uh, Thanks for your service. 
you know, I can always tell. Mm. That's how I could tell about this brittle guy. Yeah. Uh, yep. The trees of the Third Reich didn't know what hit him, huh? <laughs> Damn straight. I, I go over to the uh, jar or bowl or whatever it is, and I put a dollar bill in, and I say, I fell out of a tree, punctured my lung. Sorry to hear that. Ah, uh, you know, we try to do what we try to do. Mm. Thanks, kid. Ah, oh, you, you're welcome. Clearly we're about the same age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I would have been there myself if it wasn't for this. And he um, puts, you haven't noticed, he'd had one hand behind his back and he puts on the counter. Webbed. <laughs> no, he's got a like a like a, a hook on one hand. Yeah. yeah, I'd have thought that would come in handy. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I guess that makes the confessions to the barman easier. Always got a, always got a talking point. Yeah, oh, ain't that the truth? All right. I think we're done here. Adios. Who's next? So, boys, sounds like... Brittle's probably the, the connecting factor. Yeah. Sounds like he's our man. Uh, should we call this uh, this guy Alan? As in Mr. Alan? I guess we should. Uh, what was the deal with the Apollo? That band are playing there. Yeah, well, I guess they might have... Yeah, the, uh, the Henry Hoover sound, or what were they called? Long Island Sound. Uh, I say, flicking through my notebook. Long Island Sound, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Henry Hoover sound. I guess all we're going to get though is uh, is is an ID on the guy. Yeah, we might get more of a description. Starkey plays the sax. I mean, when what was he sent to you at the end? Ex-military. Is that what he suggested? Yeah, it looks like he served. Yeah, but like he said, you can tell. Well, it looked like he had sh- shell shock. I mean, that's not necessarily the same. Yeah, true, true. Let's not lead to conclusions. Yeah. All right. I think. Uh, I got an idea about how we play this. We should phone up and try and book him for a gig. Last minute cancellation. We need him in tonight. Yeah. Yeah. At a club called The Station. Our money's real good. And uh, we need him to come to... uh, I I smile as he says this. (laughs) We need him to come to our club, but we're so desperate. We're so desperate for uh, someone last minute. We'll even pick him up from his address. We'll send a car, and then we go and pick him up. Yeah. I'm in agreement, unless unless he's already playing a club in town tonight, in which case we can go there without any of that faff and intercept him already. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just saying that... But if not, yeah, yeah. I think that's the way we play this... Good plan. ...and see see what happens, see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, who's doing the talking? AV check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last minute AV check. I think we maybe have made our way up the stairs and are now sort of back outside the mm. the front door of the the club by the cars. Yeah. And that Moran says, uh, "Tell me, boys, what's what's the working theory now about these cases? Sure, Brittle's the connecting factor, it seems, but yeah, he's the pusher. He's the pusher somehow. He he gets he gets them to uh, buy the drugs after they know that they're going to come to him." We don't know how long he's been selling this stuff, but... And he's selling some dirty, dirty, dirty stuff. It's all cut with who knows what horse tranquilizers. I look out across the bay. Unless it's a magic saxophone. (laughs) I look out across the bay and I do not laugh as he laughs at that. (laughs) My my eyes are quite wide. Unless, uh, I don't know, unless it's something else. What What do you think, Moran? I don't know what to think. I, I kick a stone away towards the water. Presumably a gull is there nearby and leaps off, squawking inhumanly. Feel them. It's, uh... It's just too much of a coincidence for Brittle not to be involved, but drugs... Not sure. Told me about that strange image you saw painted in blood on the floor of that poor family home. I think they're into it. Yeah, I think they're into it. I think this guy Robinson, he's already in the church or whatever. Satanism. You know, they, they, they're they coming, they're playing something like a hymn. It's like a hymn to him, maybe. And and it's, it's stoked him into a madness. Oh, yeah, so there's plenty of religious examples of religious cults who get themselves hopped up on drugs 
to experience, you know. Hypnotism, sure, sure. No, I mean, like, they, they take a lot of hallucinogenic drugs. Hallucinogens. In order to have, you know, some kind of cosmic experience. Yeah. Sure. And some sort of dream visions as well may come from from that. Yeah. Mix that with, uh, with uh, you know, the desire to some crazy beliefs about killing people and spilling blood and you got yourself a cocktail for, for crazy. Can I check what time it is in, in game? Half past six. Half past six. These, these are types. Sometimes they work late, right? Maybe we should just tr- drop by Alan's apartment uh, or office, see if he's in. Yeah. So you've got a phone number for him, but you've got a telephone number for him, but not an address, just so you know. Uh, we can look that up real easy. Telephone for the agent. For the booking agent, yeah. Let's just call him. I think we just call him and ask uh, and ask if we can book the, this guy. I mean, I'm just thinking if he's involved, he might run. What if what if he's the man who sends him around? I'm just thinking we turn up, literally just turn up, see what we find. Check where he's uh, check where he's playing. You mean, and then go from there, or? Ah, well, presumably that'll tell us that. But we turn up. I know, like technically, we don't have a warrant or anything, but. We turn up, we knock on the door, we see if we're allowed in, and he lets us in, and we talk, we ask him some questions. These arts types, they work late, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like that's, if we, that's why if we phone him and, and don't tell him we're the cops, there's no reason he sure, should Sure, sure. Well, Carmel, you're up. Yeah? I've seen you with the ladies. Okay. But I think if we get, if we get a funny suspicion, we should get down there. Absolutely. Well, why don't we cover our backs? Let's, let's let's get let's get close and call. What about that? That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Get eyes on the place just in case he bolts. And you can tell I'm agitated. I, I mean, like, it doesn't even take a psychology role to realize that the conversation looking out over the bay, Moran's question has ruffled me. You're right there, Ferrari. You seem agitated. Yeah, you need a pit stop. I think I think my hand goes to the diary involuntarily in the pocket which I think you both know is there. And I go, oh, yeah, 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 no, no problem, no problem here. Hey, like, I got checked by the uh, the best doctors um, in the uh, um, the Renfield Air Base, uh, and uh, I got to tell you, they, they gave me a full clean bill of health after my six months of uh, rehabilitation, just because it was punctured and just because I didn't kill no krauts. I discharged my weapon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just saying that... And I, I pat my pocket unconsciously. I, I didn't mean uh, your, your physical health. I meant, like, we've all had a pretty rough morning. We've all seen some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. so he's not normally like this. He's not normally like this. Right, yeah. Well, uh, hey, take another slug on this. If you like, Ferrari, I could take you back down the station and let these two deal with the, uh, the booking agent. No, I'd like to see this through, if that's all right with you. That's what I thought. So... Should we make the call? Yeah, let's make the call. Yeah. Well, we drive. We, let's drive to the area. Make the call from there, just in case he bolts. Which area? Uh, uh, the, let's get to the payphone and we'll find out. Ask um, inquiries. Ask the operator. I, sp- I I run. I run to a payphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Ferrari, wait up! <laughs> there he goes. From what I hear, that man just loves running to payphones. You can't stop him once he gets going. The last one didn't go so well. I see, yeah, maybe as I get to it, so I break out in a sweat. I mean, even more sweat than the, the horrible heat of the early evening. A dense, hanging New York mugginess. And I, uh, I, I, lean, I lean against the metal and, and the cool on the forehead is enough to stir me into action. Yeah, can you put me through? I need directory inquiries. I mean, um, uh, my badge number is 147014. You gotta pick up the receiver first. Jesus. God damn it, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. <laughs> You're right there, Ferrari. I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> I, uh, again, I, I sort of offer him my hip flask as like a slug of whiskey just in case. Listen, I'm not, I'm not the one with a 1030 finish. I can, I can do this all night. <laughs> Literally, I've done 50 hours of this. I can do it all night. Uh, putting you through, and they you get put through to the um, switchboard. Yeah, I need um, uh, badge number one four seven zero one four. I need an address uh, for the following number. I I give her the number for Dominic Allen. She says, "Oh, that's out in um, East Hampton." Wait, is that Maggie? Maggie, is that you? 
Yeah. I'm here with Car- I'm here with Carmel. You want you want to talk to him? Oh. Oh. I- I'll put him on. I'll put him on. Hey, Carmel. It's it's Maggie. I I, I don't know. I'm. Do- Carmel. It's Maggie. Do I sound all right? Yeah, you sound great. You sound great. Do I sound all right. <laughs> Carmel. It's Maggie, and I had a. Hey, Maggie. How you doing? Hi, John. Hey, Maggie. How are you? Oh, I'm real swell. Yeah. You finishing your shift soon? Yeah, real soon. H- how about you? Well, listen, we're on this real serious case. It's quite dangerous, you know. Oh. I can't say much more than that. Oh. Take care. Yeah. Well, there's a chance you may never see me again, but uh <laughs> if you do. Oh, John. If you do, I'll take you to the best restaurant in town. How's that? Oh, John. That would be just wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just cling to that, all right, Maggie? All right. And in the meantime, you got that address for us? Could be a lifesaver. Sure, yeah. It's in East Hampton. East Hampton. Got it. Um, it's uh, 54 Boyle Street in East Hampton. Ah, Boyle Street. I haven't heard that street's name in years. Okay. Well, thank you, Maggie. Where are you now? Ah, uh, listen. I wish I could tell you. But uh, you know how it is, I'm sure. We don't write anything down. (laughs) Your sister mentioned me at all? Uh, no. (laughs) No reason. Anyway, Maggie. Hey, hey, John, we should go. We should go. Yeah, yeah, we should. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon. All right, doll. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Click. (laughs) Horrible smooth, man. Um, Right, well, we got the address. It's Wall Street. Oh, yeah, I think I know. Yeah. Well Street in East Hampton. Now, uh, for your information, that's going to be like, that's a couple of hours drive away. Son of a bitch. Right. Well, looks like the phone call's the thing, huh? I, I punched Carmel uh, in a friendly way in the arm and said, you dog. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> Did I miss again? Oh, not on the nose again. <laughs> no, no. So too far to drive. Should we just make the call? I guess, you know. Yeah, make the call. Yeah. Who wants to take this one? Who's the most agent-like? You got the smoothest voice, Jarmo. Well, they do call me the smooth one. Come on, you you, you, already, you sound like a movie star. It's you. Okay, here we go. Hey, here we go. Okay, I, I key it in. Oh, I, hey, quick, just before I dial. What club do I say? If I, if I'm, if I do go down the route of trying to book him, what shall I say? I, I'll tell him we'll pick up, because we'll pick him up, but... Uh, if he really presses you for a name... Yeah. Uh, say, uh... Caramel and Waffle. Perfect. It's new. New place. Outskirts of Harlem. Sounds great. Very trendy. Very trendy. Yeah, exactly. Edgy. Okay, cool. Oh, Juju House. Say Juju House. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll say Juju House. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not played there. That actually exists. Maybe not. Didn't it burn ring, down? Ring. 20 years ago? Yeah. I think they rebuilt it. Oh. So you, you call the number? Yeah. It rings, and it rings for quite a while. God damn it. And eventually, um, the, the, the phone, someone picks up the phone, and uh, you hear... <coughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Dominic. <laughs> yeah, pleasure, pleasure. Um, Listen, sorry for phoning at this sort of hour, but... Uh... Am I right in thinking you represent uh, an artist by the name of Nick Brittle? Oh, one of my most popular clients, yeah. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, here, listen, um, I'm just uh, an interested party. I was wondering, is he playing anywhere tonight that we could uh, maybe go see him? Uh, uh, absolutely. He's playing, um, he's uh, supporting the Love Island Sound again over at the Apollo. Oh, great. I That's uh, music to my ears, sir. We're, uh, we're a small group of producers um we've just been following his music and we'd love to see him live music to your ears and dollars in my pocket well quite ah lovely well uh we'll head down there tonight and uh see him thank you so much for your help oh you're welcome i mean anything else i can help you with Uh, do you represent the uh sound as well yes ah great and uh yeah they're on the up and up anyone else you you don't represent the emerald dolls or uh, alex hound by any chance alex hound no um emerald emerald dolls yes i do yes Wow, you got quite the monopoly. I represent most of the best jazz acts in New York City. <laughs> it certainly sounds like it. Well, listen to me, sir. We'll, we'll be in touch again because we have a very interesting venture set up, a new jazz club, and it's 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 hopping. It really is. Oh, that's what I'd like to hear. Hold on two seconds, just a moment. And I, I put the receiver to my chest and I go, what else do I ask him fucking hell? 
I don't think you say anything else. Just give me a number. Like, just your private number. He'll never call. Okay. Yeah, that's all perfect. We'll we'll be there at the Apollo. Uh, in the meantime, do you want to take down my number? Um, and I'll... Because I'll, I'll be in touch again about bookings, etc. I'll just... Call, call me back. Call me back whenever... Excellent. Suits you. Once you've heard him, you'll call me back, I'm sure. The name's, uh... The name's Ron Waffle. Ron Waffle. Yeah. Interesting name. Well, thank you. And, uh... Yeah, well... See you soon. Absolutely. Did your uh, sister say anything about me? <laughs> I, d- I do not. I do not say, Ronald, come back to bed. <laughs> Didn't mention you, no. Ah, no, no reason. Anyway, have a good night. My sister's still in England. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Excuse me, what? I'll, s- I'll see you soon. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Fucking Yankee bastard. <laughs> mm. I-, I nod and I say, makes sense. Alan Dominic. Yeah. I thought Dominic, I thought Dominic Allen was a crazy name. Yeah. Alan Dominic. Makes more sense. So, Brittle supporting the, the sound guys. They're playing the Apollo tonight. Long Island Sound at the Apollo. So uh, I say we head down there. Yeah, we, well, if it's half, it's half six now, there'll it'll be, um, the support act will be going on soon. We should get down there. Shoot, shoot, shoot fill him full of fucking lead. <laughs> ingratiate ourselves with the clientele. Are you going to take the bridge and then 48th? Are you going to try and take uh, a left of the park? Uh, take me to Toady Toad Street. That's all I need. Toady Toad's all we need. All right, Moran, you're with me. You want to drive? I throw in the keys. Sure. I like to drive. And he grabs the keys and he hops in and he starts the car. He starts the car before you've even opened your door and got in. No, nice. My kind of style. Also, like that, if he doesn't really catch the keys. He just opens his hand, and this, it's, his hand is so wide, it just kind of just lands. Yeah, and closes. it's like a catch. It's like a catch. mid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes into the sort of the pad of his thumb. And it just sort yeah, of lands yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. I think as as we're about to pull off, I think just before I get in, Rusty's driving in ours. I think I just say, "Hey, when we get there, say it's busy. Say there's doormen. What do you reckon we split? Two of us go in. Two of us sort of scope out the back. Make sure there's no one for him to bolt." Um, or do sure. we all just go in? No, I like it. I like it. I'm getting in. I'm getting in. I'll see you there. All right. See you there. Because <laughs> he's driving off. Just dive head first through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Still Legs kicking out as you pull. <laughs> that is the 70s sequel to this one. Well, if you like the sound of the Apocalypse players doing the 70s, then we've got a real treat in store for you. But you'll have to be patient, because next week we bring you the finale of The Afflicted. And remember, if you're craving additional horrors, you can always check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash apocalypse players. <laughs>